Good day everyone, I am Lovely Grace Erno and I am the one to report a doctor inclusive and special education module 7 titled Anxiety Disorder Topic 1 to 8. So let's start. General Generalized Anxiety Disorder. It is a it is a common disorder characterized by long-lasting anxiety which is not focused on any one object or situation. It's due to be a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Generalized anxiety disorder is the most common anxiety di disorder to affect older adults. Anxiety can be symptom of a medical of substances abuse problem and medical professionals must be aware of this. A person may find that they have problems making daily decisions and remembering commitments as a result of lack of concentration, preoccupation with worry. Appearance looks strained with increased sweating from the hands, feet and axial and they may be tearful which can suggest depression. So, there are three f risk factors. First is the history of child abuse, family history, and poverty. People suffering from God experience non-specific persistent fear and worry and overly concerned with everyday matters. God is characterized by chronic Excessive worry accompanied by three or more of the following symptoms. Restlessness, fatigue, concentration problems, irritability, muscle tension, and sleep disturbance. Next is specific phobias. Largest category of anxiety disorder which includes all cases in fear and anxiety and triggered by a specific stimulus or situation. Between 5% and 12% of the population worldwide suffer specific phobia. This single largest category of anxiety disorder is that a specific phobia which includes cases which is fear and anxiety According to the National Institute of Mental Health, a phobia is an intense fear of aversion to specific objects or situations. There are five common phobias, flying, blood, highway driving, tunnels, and heights. People who are exposed to their phobia may experience trembling, Shortness of breath or rapid heartbeat. So next is panic disorder. Panic disorder, a person who has a brief attack of intense terror and apprehension. As a fear of discomfort that abruptly arises and speaks in less than 10 minutes can last for seven, several hours. Attacks can be triggered by stress, irritational thoughts, general fear or fear of the unknown or even exercise. A heightened awareness, hypervigilance, hypervigilance rather, of body functioning occurs during panic attacks wherein any perceived psycho psycho Psychological change is interpreted as a possible life-threatening illness. People who are suffering unexpected or not panic attacks may experience trembling, shaking, confusion, dizziness, nausea, and difficulty breathing. Next is agora, agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is a specific anxiety about being in a place or situation where escape and difficult or embarrassing or well help may be available. Strongly linked 
with panic disorder is an often precipitated by the fear of having a panic attack. A person who has a panic attack and may develop anxiety. So next is social anxiety disorder. Describes and intense fear and avoidance of negative public scrutiny, public embarrassment, humiliation, or social interaction. People who are suffering from social anxiety disorder often attempt to avoid the source of their anxiety. This fear can be specific to particular social situations, such as public speaking or, more typically, is experience in most or all social interactions. Social anxiety often manifests specific physical symptoms, including blushing, sweating, rapid rate, rapid heart rate, and difficulty speaking. It is important to understand that children are also affected by social anxiety disorder while attending school. Their symptoms are different compared to teenager and adult symptoms, including difficult processing, retrieving information, sleep deprivation, descriptive, disruptive behavior in class, and irregular class participation. Although their symptoms associated with this disorder and, and different compared to teenagers and adults. Social Physical Anxiety, SPA, is a subtype of social anxiety. It is concern over the evaluation of one's body by others. SPA is common among adolescents, especially females. So next is Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder once was once an anxiety disorder now moved to trauma and stress-related disorder that result from traumatic experiences. PSTD affects approximately 3.5% of U.S. adults every day, and an estimated 1 in 11 people will be diagnosed with PSTD in their lifetime. Post-traumatic stress can result from an extreme situation, such as combat, natural disaster, rape, hostage situation, child abuse, bullying, or even a serious accident. So, common symptoms included hypervigilance, flashbacks, avoidant behavior, anxiety, anger, and depression. People who suffer from PSTD often try to detach themselves from their friends and family and have difficulty maintaining this close relationship. Studies have found the degree of exposure to a disaster have, has been found to be the best predictor of PSTD. So next is separation anxiety disorder. Separation anxiety disorder is the feeling of excessive and inappropriate levels of anxiety over being separated from a person or a place. Separation anxiety is a normal part of development in babies or children. And it is only when this feeling is excessive or inappropriate that it can be considered a disorder. Separation anxiety disorder affects roughly 7% of adults and 4% of children. But the childhood causes tend to be more severe. In some in instances, even a brief separation can produce panic. Often, the parents will reinforce the anxiety because they do not know how to properly work through it within the child. In addition to parent training and family therapy, medication such as SSRIS can be used to treat separation anxiety. So next is situational anxiety. Situational anxiety is caused by new situation or changing events. It can also be caused by various events that make the 
particular individual uncomfortable. It occurs in very common. Often, an individual will experience panic attacks or extreme anxiety in specific situations. A situation that causes one individual experiences anxiety may not affect another individual at all. For example, some example of some situation anxiety that may cause them experiencing extreme anxiety, possibly a panic attack, uneasy in crowd or tie, tight spaces, standing in tightly packed line, and at the bank or a store register. So next is ob obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive compulsive disorder is not classified as an anxiety disorder by the DSM 5, but it is by the ICD 10. It was previously classified as an anxiety disorder in the DSM 4. It is a condition where the person has obsession, distressing, persistent, and intrusive thoughts or images, and compuls compulsions, urges to repeatedly perform specific acts or rituals that are not caused by drugs or physical disorder, and which cause distress or social dysfunctions. The compulsive rituals are personal rules vows to relieve the feeling or discomfort. A person with Obsessive compulsive disorder knows that the symptoms are unreasonable and struggle against both the thoughts and behavior. Of those with OCD, about 20% of people will overcome it, and symptoms will it at least reduce over time for most people, a further 50%. There are three risk factors of OCD are the following. Family history. Being single, although let me result from this order. Higher socio socioeconomic class or not begin. Being in paid employment. So the last but not the least in my topic is the selective mutism. Is a disorder in which a person who is normally capable of speech does not speak in specific situations or to specific people. Selective mutism usually coexist with shyness or social anxiety. People with selective mutism stay silent, even with the consequences of their silence includes shame, social ostracism or even punishment. Selective mutism affects about 0.8% of people at some point in their life. Testing for selective mutism is important because doctor must determine if it is as uh, issues associated with the child's hearing, movements associated with the jaw or tongue, and if the child can understand when others are speaking to them. So that's all for my topic and Alan Grace Gaurino will be the will be reported the sum of the part of this module. So that's all for my topic. Thank you and God bless.